Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm reviewing another Blitzwolf product and this is another Zigbee product and this is the BWIS2 which is a door open door or window open and close sensor and this was provided to me by Banggood free of charge for this review video. So in this video I'm going to talk about how you can use this device to control other devices in the Tuya application. Just like other Blitzwolf product, this works with a Blitzwolf app or the Tuya Smart or a Smart Life app. I'm going to use the Tuya Smart. And in order to use this Zigbee device or any Zigbee device for that matter, you need a Zigbee gateway. And for that I'm using the Blitzwolf Zigbee gateway and I do have a separate video on that. So if you don't know what that device is about, how you set it up, I recommend that you watch that video first. <laughs> I don't think that there is much to be said about a door and the window opening sensor. I mean, it's basically two different parts. You have this central unit, which is going to mount, well, either on your wall or on the door, well, the, sorry, the door frame or the door itself. And you have the other unit, which is the magnet. And these two needs to be aligned and to be, you know, fairly close to each other in order to detect a contact or well, the absence of the contact. And this part is only a magnet. So if you don't want to use this particular uh, physical box, you can just substitute it with a strong enough magnet. And if I look at the unit itself, as you can see, it's not really big. What is slightly different from the other Zigbee sensor that I've reviewed, which was a Sonoff one, that it has a micro USB output. Because unlike the Sonoff one, which uses a coin cell to power it, this actually has a small rechargeable battery inside. So you need the USB connection to charge it up. And there is a small micro USB lead provided without a charger. So you have to use your own charger or, for example, probably it's going to be easier if you just have use a, a small power bank and, you know, you can just go around the house and then, you know, recharge these units periodically. Unfortunately, I didn't find any information how long it is going to last, but I'm assuming it would be at least somewhere in, you know, five, six months or probably longer. Besides this, you have this back cover, which can be unclipped and that reveals the on off button so you can switch the unit off separately and also the reset button and in order to pair this unit with the zigbee hub you need to reset it just to get into pairing mode which is going to be indicated by the flashing but you will find the instruction for this when you are trying to pair this device and i also explained the whole process in my other video that i talked about so you can see that it's uh, yeah is2 it has a 500 milliamp hour battery and that's all there is to it in terms of the content, this comes in this Blitzwolf box, the usual white and uh, green Blitzwolf box, and you are getting the unit itself. You are getting two double-sided sticky tape, one for the unit and the other for one for the magnet. There is a micro USB lead. As I said, it's to charge the unit. And there is a user manual which comes in six languages. So it's going to be fairly short description on each language, how you set up the unit and how you pair it with the gateway. And to be honest, I'm not sure whether a rechargeable or a small coin cell is easier. And maybe it could be a little bit more convenient just to go around the house and, you know, plug in the micro USB lead without removing the, the unit from, let's say, the door and then charge it that way. But then, you know, the whole charging process takes more time. Whether as with a battery powered unit, you can just unclip it and then change the battery and, and then that's it. It's like a, you know, 10 second job. Um, I guess you just have to make your mind up about whether you prefer this method or a coin cell method. To be honest, I've already playing around with this unit, so I set up some scenes. So you will see that some of these lights will turn on as I start to, you know, move the, the switch around. And since I already paired it with my Zigbee gateway, you can see the IS2, which is in my living room. And if I go into the screen, you can see that at the moment it is closed and the battery level is high. And, and I also get some history when it was turned on and when it was turned off. And I can go, you know, a couple of days back and you can see that I've been playing around with this uh, uh, today. And it is going to give you a live feedback of the current status. So if I remove the magnet and I open the connection, now it's going to say that the sensor is open. And as you can see, this light turns on, which is an automation that I programmed. So let me just turn off the light now. Okay, I just did that. And if I put the sensor back, or sorry, the magnet back, 
then it says that this is closed now. And you can see the closed and the open actions in the history. And well, this is a sensor, so there is not much else that you can do here on the screen. If you go into the device settings, you can do the usual stuff. You can rename the device, you can change the icon, you can change which room it is in, and you can see what uh, automations you have created for this sensor. I mean, I've created one, and you can share the device with other users and yeah, enable the offline notification, but that's pretty much it. The real added benefit is going to be in the automation. So actually, let's head back to the automation. I click on Smart and on the automation, and you can see the one that I've created already. But uh, let me just delete that, and so we can create it from the beginning. So I'm going to click on Plus and select When Device Status Changes and the IS2. And as you can see, we have a few options. So first of all, we can have a battery indicator. So let's say if the battery level is less than, um, I don't know, maybe 10%. I don't know why the percentage goes up to 500, but anyway, let's just ignore that. So if the battery is less than 5%, then we want to send a notification to the uh, message center. And I can rename this as well saying that the door sensor door sensor battery low so i will get a notification when the uh, battery is running low and this needs to be recharged hmm, fairly nice okay let's create another automation when the device status changes is2 and as you can see we have two other actions based on the say based on the state so if the state opens, we can do something. So we can turn on this lamp as well. So run device, and that's going to be the desk lamp, and switch it on. Next, and then save. And you can do this like, for example, here you can specify whether you want it to do it all day or you know just at night time only. So I'm going to save it. So now what's going to happen if I remove the magnet, then we get a notification or well, uh, the device is going to stand the status change and the light turns on and it's happening quite quickly so that's good but if i go to put this magnet back nothing is going to happen because we still haven't specified what should happen when the connection is closed so i'm going to create a new automation when device status changes is2 state closed and then run device and the desk lamp and switch it off so and I'm going to save this one and we start using it so now I have a second automation so as soon as this sensor is closed the light goes off so this could be a typical automation task let's say in a, in like in a pantry you open the door you go in the light will come on and then as you leave then the light and you close the door then the light automatically goes off Okay, so that's simple, but, but we can do a slightly different automation as well. So let me just delete this second automation, which uh, turns the lamp off. And I want to go back to my previous automation, which turns the lamp on. So here we have a connection when the IS2 status is opened, then the desk lamp switch is on, but I can add some additional actions here as well. So for example, I can add a delay. I want to pick something low, so for example, just 10 seconds. And then add another task, which is again run device, and the desk lamp, and the switch, and off. So when the door sensor is opened, then it's going to turn on the lamp, and after 10 seconds, it's going to turn it off. So saved. Let's see how it works. The lamp turns on, and then the same automation is going to turn off that lamp after 10 seconds. And there it happens. So this could be, you know, another use case where by opening the door, for example, your porch light is going to open or your entryway light is going to open. But of course you would close the door immediately and you want the light to stay on for a few more minutes. So you set the delay and that will turn off your light automatically. And of course, when you close the sensor, well, nothing is going to happen because we have only programmed an automation when this sensor opens. So these will be a few cases that I thought worth mentioning about this Blitzwolf window or door opener closed sensor. 
If you are interested in this product, you will find purchasing links in the video description. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.